of unprogrammed funds appropriated for that year was released in full. Where did the money come from? I do not know. 2008, all of the unprogrammed funds were released. Now, in addition to that, debt service appropriations, which are supposed to be automatic, you know, when you borrow, you're supposed to pay back, right? Otherwise, nobody will rent you. So uh, the appropriations to pay back those debts are so-called automatically uh, appropriated. Unfortunately, Congress has this habit of reducing the debt service appropriations and using that reduction to increase the general appropriations. In 2009, 50 billion such automatic appropriations from debt servicing was reduced from the debt service fund and added to the general appropriations. Of course, at the end of the day, you will have to pay the 50 billion anyway. So what you have is an increase in the budget by 50 billion. And then, of course, this uh, newfound uh, discovery of the re the re of how to use the reenacted budget. It's a long story. And just trust me when I say that it is sometimes abused in the sense that the reenacted budget, which is supposed to be an advanced payment of appropriations, becomes additional and not uh, and not an advance. When you advance, you deduct it from the top. It's like when you have a salary, you advance your salary, you deduct that from your total salary, right? But what happened here is instead of deducting, it became an additional budget. So certain challenges to the power of the president to limit the totality of the budget level. Uh, I think it should be out. Yeah. The second power pertains to the expenditure of public funds. So as chief executive with authority, the, as chief executive, president has the authority to implement the authorized appropriation as Congress approved. And the flow of expenditure, I will not bore you with this, but just to summarize, first money is appropriated by Congress, once appropriated, allotments are released by the DBM, or the Department of Budget and Management. Once allotted, agencies will obligate those allotments, and when obligated by allotments, expenditures are made, or payments are made. So that's how expenditures flow in the government. In practice, it is a very effective mechanism by which the executive exercises control over the use of government funds. Very tight. The, 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 tight, the control of government funds is very tight. That is why it is very difficult to stand in the national government. It's not easy. For those of you who have been there know it, and hear up. And it ensures that budget allocation to government agencies and instrumentalities are made in accordance with the law. It is also a good mechanism to track accountability because you know exactly to whom the money was given and therefore who is responsible for accounting for those funds. However, the system suffers from some problems. Uh, and I think you're suffering, suffering from reading it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I'll read it for you. It suffers from complaints of non-predictability of fund releases. It is my euphemism for, say, delays in the releases of funds. Okay. The releases of funds are not quite predictable. And of course, when funds are not predictably released, then you have problems with regards to the implementation of programs and progress. However, how did these releases come about? How did, how did these delayed releases come about? Many reasons. One reason is the fact that from 2001 to, to 2010, up to today, all budgets have been reenacted. All budgets have been reenacted, either in full or partially. In three years, 2001, 2004, and 2006, uh, budget was fully reenacted. What this means is no budget was ever passed. 
and therefore the budget of the preceding year was effective. In the other years, all budgets were delayed. Uh, as of today, for instance, we don't have a budget yet. We're still running on the basis of the 2009 budget. Why is this? For one reason or another, Congress cannot agree among themselves on, on, on passing the budget on time. So that's one reason. The other is something that Ernest will discuss, the week the, weak, the weakest link in the fiscal sector, which is revenues. So because of revenues and then the shortfalls in revenues, uh, releases of funds will have to be sometimes uh, deliberately uh, delayed. And of course, there's very centralized system of disbursement in the government. 93% of the DA budget is managed in the central office. 40% of the DAR, the Department of Agrarian Reform Budget, is managed in the central office. That's just an example. Highly centralized uh, expenditure level. And then, of course, I just put political accommodations. You know what I mean? Please discuss. Please, please discuss examples. Uh, I think it will take a long time. <laughs> so, next, please. Now, the, the third major power pertains to the big voting. As I said, President under Section 38, Book 6, E0292, this the administrative code, has the power to suspend expenditures when public interest so requires. And also, under Section 23 of the same code, the, the, pres the Secretary of DBM, upon approval of the President, may modify or amend allotments already previously issued. So even if allotments have already been released to the agencies, they can in fact be called. Parang part of our um, I mean, you know, parts. <laughs> but the agency with its releases of allotments can in fact be modified. In practice, this is another instrument for keeping public expenditures in line with fiscal objectives especially when there exists an unmanageable fiscal deficit. It happened twice that I can recall vividly. In 1998, right after the Asian financial crisis, the imposition of reserves enabled the Philippine government to tame the deficit to less than 3% of GDP. And then withholding of appropriations. In 2003, when the president declared a fiscal crisis, at that time, our deficit was already